Hey guys, welcome back to Ostrich Investing, where our goal is to educate and debate specific stock investment ideas. Today we're going to talk about FedEx, a global leader in transportation and logistics. Said another way, they ship stuff. I thought it was interesting because the industry is seeing a lot of growth given the tailwinds in e-commerce, but it's also attracting increased competition, including the mighty Amazon. FedEx pays a small dividend, 1.6%, and trades at just 11 times forwards earnings estimates. I wanted to see if now might be a good entry point to invest. This video will review the business, the financials, and conclude with key considerations for, this, for investors, including bull, base, and bear case scenarios for the stock. Let's jump into it. The business, and this is pulled uh, mostly from FedEx's most recent investor presentation, uh, FedEx obviously operates across most of the world, so their network uh, covers over 220 countries and as they put in their investor presentation, links more than 99% of the world's GDP. So very large business. They have over 600, or they have 681 aircraft and more than 180,000 motorized vehicles in their fleet. Most of the aircraft is owned. Uh, they've also got more than 5,000 operating facilities across the world, um, and they process 15 million shipments a day. So no question, this is a very large operation that's deeply entrenched uh, globally. Revenue in 2019 was 70 billion, operating income of four and a half billion. Again, we mentioned daily shipments of 15. They operate in four divisions. The two biggest are FedEx Express, so think goods that are shipped via plane. And then there's FedEx Ground, which obviously is, is shipped uh, via vehicle uh, to your door. And those two divisions account uh, combined for 54% and 29% of revenue, respectively. They've also got freight, which is largely less than truckload. Uh, and FedEx services other services to businesses that they're able to offer. So that's FedEx in a nutshell. Now let's look at the stock price chart. Now I'm no expert on charting. But I'm going to go ahead and call this a classic volcano pattern, a steep ascent going up, a steep descent coming back down, and a bit of an explosion in the middle. Well, it's not quite perfectly in the middle, uh, but in December of 2019, uh, and by 2019 I mean 2018, uh, FedEx announced management changes, so the departure of some high-level executives. They also announced weak Q2 results, so they're a May year-end and they reduced guidance and the stock fell a little over 30% combined roughly on, on that news. So FedEx back in early 2018 was trading at $275 a share. It's currently at 158.84. And again, uh, late last year they had that um, unfortunate announcement to investors and also point out back in 2016, they made a large acquisition, a reasonably large acquisition of a European business called TNT for 4.4 billion euros. They are still to this day integrating that acquisition and it gets talked about in their 10K. Um, and based on quick review of some articles, this is an acquisition that hasn't gone extremely well for FedEx. Um, given that it was made in 2016, they're still integrating it in 2019. And they talk about not being able to finish the integration until about 2021. So FedEx stock price chart, um, in a nutshell, it's trading close to five-year lows here. It dipped a little bit lower at the beginning of 2016. If we look at the financial overview, and this is found on page 149 of their 10K, it gives... Um, it gives a summary of the last five years of financial results. And I think the first thing that I'll point out here is, wow, that's a lot of footnotes. There are nine footnotes on this table, uh, and I have not included those. If you're interested, obviously, go ahead and, and check out the 10K. Um, more broadly, revenues you can see going up. So we can see most likely the benefit of the industry tailwinds here, e-commerce, um, more shipments, uh, the acquisition of TNT in 2016 most likely helped drive that 50 to $60 mil, uh, billion dollar revenue growth, but you can see a nice steady trend up in revenue over time. Different, however, is operating income. It's pretty much range bound. If you exclude 2015, 
at 3.4 billion. It was 4.2 billion in 2016, and it's 4.5 billion in 2019, and it's just sort of bounced around those levels um, over the last four years. So while revenue is growing, uh, operating income is flat. And what's also interesting is then if you go down to earnings and earnings per share, they've really jumped around too. So it's gone from three dollars and seventy cents a share, increased over uh, through 2018 and then dropped sharply to $2.06. I won't get into all of the adjustments in this video, but there's several sort of non-cash and major adjustments, some of them to do with the pension and mark-to-market, um, and some of them on measuring the tax liability. So in 2018, they had a positive uh, adjustment to net income that was one time in nature, and in 2019, they had a negative uh, adjustment to net income that's one time in nature. So I think easier for us to look at operating income. And I think the last thing that I'll point out on this chart is I went ahead and got my hands dirty and added a row here. I think it's important to the story and we're gonna talk about it more later, uh, particularly around our scenarios, is I've calculated the operating margin. So just, just dividing operating income by revenues. And you can see that it, it, it increased from 7.2 to 8.3% and then has been on a steady decline. So 8.3 to 7.6 to 6.5 and then to 6.4. So FedEx operates in a, in a low margin business and margins have been, have been trending lower. There's a few discussion points. Um, there's four specific discussion points I wanna talk about around FedEx. The first is management. And in 2019, uh, again, I've, I've got the year wrong. In December of 2018, um, FedEx made, they, they announced poor Q2 earnings. Uh, they reduced guidance going forward. But a week or two prior to that, they announced that David Cunningham, uh, who was the president of FedEx Express, was going to retire at the end of the year. And he would be replaced by Raj Subramaniam, I hope I got that right, who was previously the EVP of marketing. So an unexpected shuffle. We know that the market doesn't like surprises. Uh, couple that with poor Q2 earnings and reduced guidance makes you wonder what's happening there. And to add a little bit more to the story, David Bronchek, again, I hope I got that right, right. He was the chief operating officer and rumored CEO successor. He left in February 2019. I got the year right there, February 2019. Uh, and that was just weeks after being named to the board of directors. So a couple of very high level departures and Fred Smith, who's pictured over here, um, is the founder of FedEx back in 1971, and he is currently the chairman and, and chief executive officer and is 75 years old. Uh, so when you think about management, we've got a few high-level departures that when David Bronchek was rumored to be the CEO successor, uh, have both left. Fred Smith is still there. He does own 19 and a half million shares or 8% of the, of the company, so good insider ownership. He's the chairman and CEO from a governance perspective, not ideal, but the founder with a significant stake, so uh, somewhat makes sense. Uh, the board has also recently changed the mandatory retirement age of 75. Uh, so essentially the board has made it possible for Fred to continue in his role uh, for the foreseeable future. But something as an investor you wanna think about is we've got an aging founder and CEO and we don't really have a succession plan that's at least well understood by the market. Um, the previous gentleman who was expected to take over has now left the company. So just something there to consider. Competition, this is another one. Uh, so we mentioned it at the outset of the video uh, Amazon is increasingly moving into the logistics and transportation space. FedEx isn't the only company in the space currently. UPS is one of their major competitors. And I thought it would just be interesting to look at uh, the three players together and map out roughly the size of each. Um, so in terms of planes, FedEx has 681. Again, most of them owned. UPS has 550. About half of them are owned. And then Amazon Logistics has 70 planes. Vehicles, 180,000 vehicles for FedEx, 123,000 for UPS, and 10,000 for, for Amazon. Uh, operating facilities, 2,100 for FedEx, 1,800 for UPS, and I didn't have that data for, for Amazon. So 
there's been a lot of news around FedEx and, and Amazon recently because FedEx severed ties with Amazon in June 2019, so just a couple months ago. Now, Amazon represented less than 1.3% of revenue for FedEx, but what was meaningful here is the is symbolic in that FedEx was recognizing that that Amazon is a competitor as they build out their logistics uh, business and uh, FedEx decided that they would rather forego that revenue um, than continue to work with Amazon in the space. One analyst that I read um, suggests that Amazon would need a $122 billion investment to catch up to FedEx and UPS. Um, you can see obviously Amazon's not nearly at the size or scale of FedEx or UPS. Also point out that it's more than just money here. Even if you had that capital, um, you'd need a lot of time, particularly to build out the air hubs and secure locations. So it's not like you could take 122 billion and presto, the next day you're gonna ha be able to mirror FedEx and UPS's scale and operations. Um, it would take years uh, to put this in place. So I think it's important to recognize that there's no question Amazon is a formidable competitor. They are much, much smaller than the two incumbents today, um, but something to watch going forward. And, and Amazon obviously has a track record of growing and, and building businesses quickly. So something to keep an eye on. CapEx is the third point that I wanted to talk about. And when you look at earnings, we talked about FedEx trading at about 11 times earnings. When you go to the cash flow statement, you can see depreciation and amortization of about 3.3 billion in 2019. Um, their CapEx right now is 5.5 billion in 2019. So they're spending more um, on CapEx than historical levels of depreciation. And you can see this article snip from, from Bloomberg that has a great graph that um, plots out FedEx and UPS CapEx over time. And you can see it popping up to the $6 billion roughly each mark um, over the last couple of years and projected into the future. So it says here, UPS and FedEx are spending billions to adapt their networks to the deluge of e-commerce shipments, which are less profitable than deliveries to businesses. So they're spending a lot of money expanding their fleet, getting planes that are more fuel uh, efficient. They're also investing a lot of money in their facilities and automation. Um, significant CapEx and what's the takeaway for investors right now, while it might trade at 11 times earnings, it's not actually producing free cash flow. So you can see cash flow from operations of 5.6 billion and you've got CapEx of 5.5. So there's essentially zero free cash flow being generated uh, by the business and we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. The last point I wanted to mention is a key driver uh, for FedEx and that's revenue and yield. And so uh, this might look crazy. Um, the formatting in these charts actually comes directly from FedEx's 2019 10K on page 55 and 56. So uh, that's the formatting of the charts that they've chosen to put in their annual reporting document. I didn't bother to change them, but it, I found it a little bit interesting that uh, they wouldn't have spruced those up a little bit. Anyway, the story is still there. So we talked about earlier 15 million daily packages being shipped, and, and that's the trend here. You can see from 2016 to 2019, going from 12 million packages a day up to 15 million. So good growth in volume. And then over on the right, it shows between FedEx Express, domestic, international, and then FedEx Ground, um, the trend in yield or uh, average price per package. And so you take two, both of those together and you're gonna get your revenue. So what you can see is FedEx Express on the domestic side, pricing's been trending slightly up from about $17 a package to 18 and a half. Uh, FedEx Express on the international side's been flat to down from about $54 down to 51. Uh, and FedEx Grounds actually had a pretty good run from $7.80 to $8.97. So pricing sort of been flat to up a little bit. Volume has been clearly up, trending up. 
so interesting to think about as an investor if there's more competition particularly with with Amazon if they become more meaningful in the space what's that going to mean for your yield or your pricing per package I don't think there's much question that the trend on volume is clearly up um, over time but interesting to see what happens to pricing so those were some of the key points that I wanted to go through so let's talk about key considerations for the stock before we get into our scenarios so what are the strengths of a business like FedEx? Well, the first is it's deeply embedded. They're in 220 countries. They've got global operations with a large footprint. That's really tough to replicate. Um, so enviable position in that between them and UPS, they're really the dominant players. They've also got tailwinds from e-commerce and globalization. We talked about volume going up. That's a pretty clear trend that they're, they're benefiting from and we've seen that in their revenue historically over the last five years. I think the last thing is FedEx has a pretty good track record and reputation. If, if you're a business or, or even just a, a regular consumer and you need to ship something reliably, uh, they've got a pretty good uh, track record and reputation and you're probably willing to pay a little bit more to know that it's going to get there uh, on time. Risks, now there's, there's a bunch of them. Uh, the first we'll start with is it's a highly cyclical business and this this wording comes right out of their uh, 10k and it's dependent on the economy and trade so this is a real bellwether stock uh, when you think about GDP growth this will hit FedEx right on the nose so a good strong global GDP growth will be good for FedEx any weakness any recession uh, would see a big uh, impact to FedEx geopolitical events I mean almost all events are going to hit FedEx here. It's, it's not immune. So whether it's tariff war that, that might impact GDP, it could be trade, um, any issues with trade that's going to reduce trade, that's going to reduce volume of shipment. Brexit, how's that going to impact a trade within the European Union? Almost any relevant geopolitical news is likely going to have an impact on FedEx. Number three, it's a capital intensive business with low operating margins. So we, we showed their operating margins in that six to seven percent range. Gives them little room for error. And uh, one of the things that they pointed out in their documents was that they often need to be making decisions on distribution centers, investing in technology, and we're talking billions of dollars here, uh, aircraft, and they need to be making these decisions a couple years in advance. So they need to accurately project demand and, and uh, volume for um, the amount of shipments that they need to process. And there's not much wiggle room when you're sitting at a 6 to 7% operating margin. Uh, for labor, uh, they've got owner operators for FedEx Ground um, that, uh, again, similar to a video we did on Uber, there's question as to whether they can be considered independent contractors. That would also be a, a risk for FedEx. Uh, unionization for FedEx Express pilots, etc. I believe some of their pilots are, are unionized, but just again, think this is a large company with hundreds of thousands of employees um, and having access to good labor uh, on the right terms uh, would be a key risk. Weather, uh, FedEx, we go back to their track record and reputation, getting it delivered on time regardless. Um, they, they need to deal with um, continuing business through thick and thin, uh, so just a risk factor here. And lastly, fuel prices. I think they, they spend several billion dollars on, on jet fuel alone each year. Key drivers for the stock. I think the big one, and again, we're gonna talk about it in our scenarios, is operating margins. So how do you get there? Well, it's volume and yield, which we talk about. So it's revenue per package, it's the top line. So revenue for, the, for, for FedEx is essentially gonna be that combination of volume and and price per package and then the costs so all of your fixed costs and that's your fleet that's the fuel more of your direct variable costs that's your labor some of it fixed some of it variable add all that together um, and that's what's going to get you your your pretty thin operating margins uh, number two economic growth and global trade uh, obviously as we talked about before and then e-commerce growth as a percentage of total retail uh, E-commerce has been um, 
has been growing without question, and that's been driving demand for shipments through FedEx and, and other providers. Does that continue to take over a bigger and larger share of retail? So those are the key considerations for FedEx. Let's jump into our scenarios. So reminder again, this is not exhaustive and it's meant to be illustrative. And what I decided to do here is really focus on the operating margins. Uh, I could have flexed up and down a couple of different variables, um, but this is the one that's gonna have by far the biggest impact. Um, and so I wanted to look at, at this variable and really isolate uh, where they come out and what that might mean for the stock. I've kept, so because of that, I've kept revenue the same across all three scenarios, 80 billion. The other thing I've done is I've looked out at fiscal 2021. So it would be the year May 2021. So it's out a couple years. FedEx has already told investors that this current fiscal year uh, being 2020 that we're in is going to be a bit messy. Um, and I want to look out at least one year. So you could one year, sorry, you could probably make an argument to look out a couple years, uh, but I thought for the purposes of our scenario, let's look out at least to that second fiscal year. So here's the bull case. 2021 revenue of 80 billion, 10% operating margin is achieved. So they talk about this in their investor presentation that their medium to longer term goal is to achieve 10% operating margins. Recall they're doing about six and a half right now. Uh, so they achieve that 10%, they compete well with Amazon and UPS, so no major competitive disruption. CapEx equals depreciation, so in a couple of years, the major CapEx spend comes off and re reverts more to normalized levels. That's gonna produce free cash flow of about five and a half billion. And if we look at a free cash flow yield of 8%, discounted back one year at 10%, that gets you an implied share price of $237.47 which is 49% higher than where the stock trades today. Uh, so just quickly on the free cash flow yield of 8%, not a ton of science going into that other than projected growth rate of the economy, which is I think what you could expect from FedEx with a little bit of tailwinds from e-commerce. Um, and given the size of the business, um, and I, get, I think the last point is just the low margins and the capital intensity, I, I thought, 8% seemed reasonable given the size and scale of the business. 10% is probably overly punitive, um, but unlike you know a business like Starbucks where you might make an argument for sort of a 5% or, or, or something more attractive given the growth and, and uh, the free cash flow conversion of the business, um, we 8% felt, felt like a good place to start. But obviously you can flex that up or down if you want. Base case, again, uh, 2021 revenue of 80 billion. But here we've got 7% operating margin versus 6.4 in 2019. So what it would mean is a reversal of that trend down that we saw, uh, but pretty close to where we are today in terms of operating margins. Again, CapEx equals depreciation. That gets you free cash flow of 3.7 billion. Again, using that 8% free cash flow yield, discounted back but for the one year at 10%, gets you to implied share price of 159.39 which is essentially flat uh, to the current share price. And then the bear case, similar, 80 billion in revenue, but now we've got 5% operating margins. So this would be a continued downward trend in the margins and essentially competition weighs on margins. So more competitive pricing, they've still got the same fixed cost, uh, CapEx equals depreciation. Here your free cash flow is only gonna be two and a half billion. And if we again go through the same math, that gets you an implied share price of $107.35, which is down 32% from the current share price. So in conclusion, I think it's really a trade-off between industry tailwinds, growth, and significant barriers to entry that FedEx has, and you trade that off against the high fixed cost and low margin industry that FedEx operates in. It might look cheap on a price to earnings basis, but you need to look a few years out to see normalized free cash flow, in my opinion. Now, what do you think? Let me know what you think in the comments section. Oh, hey, and while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We'll be back soon with more content, but until then, happy investing, and don't bury your head in the sand.